Welcome back guys, hope everybody's safe and well. Today we're going to be following on from our video from last week where we actually created a one second clock pulse without using the system or clock memory inside of our S7 1200 PLC. But we're going to be answering a question that I asked on social media on Monday. Now on Friday, we released a video on how to create a one second clock pulse without using clock memory inside of our S7 1200 PLC. And we did that with our two timers and the program is up here. And then on Monday, what I did is I posted out a question asking you guys how long timer one is on for and how long timer two is on for. And here is that question. And here are some of your responses. A select few of you got the answer correct. However, the majority got the answer incorrect. A lot of the majority said that the timers are on for one second each. A couple of people said one second and two seconds, but a majority said one second each. The answer is timer one is on for one second, which is correct. However, timer two is only on for one PLC scan. And that PLC scan might be half a millisecond, one millisecond, whatever the PLC scan is on that PLC. Today, we're gonna to show you why that's the case and how that's the case and prove that it is only on for one PLC scan. But before we get into the video, what I'd like you to do is give the video a like so I know you're enjoying this series. Comment below to let me know that you're watching. And then if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button or if you're watching us on Facebook, give us a like. It helps us out a lot and we hope you're enjoying these free training videos that we're putting out at the moment. Okay, let's show you how this timer is only on for one PLC scan. Okay, so what we have here is in Network 1, our one second clock pulse using two timers. We have our enable signal here tied to M0.0, .0 and that is then controlling this timer DB1 for one second. What I've now done is I've tied it to an M bit so that we can see how long these are actually on for with inside of the PLC memory. So this M bit, M10.0, will then turn on after one second and it will close this contact here and it will close this contact here. This will then turn on my lamp and it will also begin running my second timer here for one second. After the one second, timer two will then turn on and what timer two will then do is open this contact, turning off this timer, turning off this output, turning off these two contacts, turning off this timer, turning off the timer two output, and then turning off this signal here to reset the entire program. Now, as I mentioned before, a lot of people, when I asked the question, how long is this signal on for and how long is this signal on for, a lot of people said one second. And the reason why they're thinking that is because each timer is controlling the other and each timer is set to one second. However, it's only timer one that is on for one second, whilst timer two is on for one PLC scan. And the reason why this is only on for one PLC scan is because M10.1 effectively cuts its own throat. It's tied to itself. So when M10.1 turns on, this contact opens up, which turns off this timer, which turns off this M bit, which opens this contact here, which turns off this timer, and then turns off itself. It's effectively cutting its own throat. So what I want to do now is I want to actually prove to you that this is only on for one PLC scan, and this one is only on for one second. So to do this, I'm gonna write a small routine. So inside of Network 2, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add in a normally open contact, and I'm gonna tie that to M10.0, which is my timer one output. I'm then gonna tie that contact there to what we call an increment instruction. And this increment instruction increments on every PLC scan that that contact is on for. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tie this increment instruction to MW100. Just throw it into a random register. It's asking me to give it a data type. I'll just set this increment up for an integer. So what's gonna happen here is when M10.0 turns on, this contact will close and it'll begin to increment MW100 by one on every PLC scan. If our PLC scan time is one millisecond, we should see around about a thousand inside of MW100. Now to show us this, I'm just gonna branch down again and I'm gonna look at the negative falling edge of M10.0. Let's place this into here. 
give this a storage bit address and I'll just use M1.0. And what we're going to do is when M10.0 turns off, I'm then going to transfer the value that was inside of MW100. I'm then going to transfer the value that was inside of MW100 and move it into MW102. And then I'm going to zero MW100 ready for the next cycle. So what will happen is when the enable signal turns on, this will currently be off, our timer will then run, and then after one second, this flag will then turn on. When this flag turns on, it'll then begin to increment the value in MW100 on every PLC scan. When M10.0 turns off, on the negative falling edge, we're then going to transfer the value from MW100 into MW102 and then zero MW100 ready for the next cycle. So inside of MW102, it should then tell us how many scans that M10.0 was on for. And what we're going to do is the same thing again, but for the second timer. So I'm just going to copy this network, paste it in below, and I'm going to change this one here to M10.1. I'm then going to store this inside of M10.1. W200 and then when M10.1 turns off set it to another storage bit I'm then going to transfer MW200 into MW202 and then I'm going to reset MW202 save that there download that to the PLC. Once that's been downloaded, I'm then going to go online via the monitor mode. And then I'm going to just minimize this window here. And here are my two networks. You can see here it's got 16 hash on the values. That's because it's monitoring the values in hex. So to change that, we just right click inside of the network, go to modify, display format, and then decimal. And now it changes it into decimal. And then here, this one's already in decimal. You can see here, MW102 has already got a value inside of it. I'll just zero MW102. So modify operand, zero that. There we go. And now we're ready. So first of all, let's just right click M0.0 and then modify this to one. And off we go. So what's happening is this lamp is flashing on for one second, off for one second, on for one second, off for one second, and it's using M10.0, the first timer's output, to drive the lamp on for one second. So this M10.0 should be on for one second, whilst this guy here should be on for one PLC scan. And if you're actually looking at this, you can see this output coil turn on, and then back off. You can actually see it on for one second. Look at timer two output. You can't see that turn on, but it is turning on. That is definitely turning on. If it wasn't turning on, this routine wouldn't work. So it must be turning on, and it's turning on for one PLC scan. And to prove that, we're going to use these networks below. So let's look at this network first of all. Network 2, when this timer turns on, the first timer, it's then going to begin incrementing on every PLC scan. And to check what scan time our PLC currently is, if we go to online and diagnostics, we can then have a look at the cycle time over here. And you can see here, the shortest has been one millisecond and our current scan time is one millisecond. So all we need to do is multiply the value that's inside of our MW by one millisecond. Now chances are it's not one millisecond bang on, it might be 0.9 milliseconds, 1.1 milliseconds, but it's approximately one millisecond. So we should see a thousand counts inside of our memory word 102. Go back to my main OB1 and here we go there's my memory word 102 and as you can see the value that's inside of there at the moment is fluctuating around about the 995 994 mark that there tells me that that timer timer one on signal m10.0 is on for one second let's have a look at network three network three here we go and whoops I know what I've done wrong there. I've actually zeroed my MW202 and not my MW200. No worries, we'll just go back to that and zero MW200. I thought that didn't look correct. Download that to the PLC. 
everybody makes mistakes you see say yes to that minimize that and then what I'm gonna do is well there we go and you can see here there doesn't look to be much activity at all in this network and that's because it's only on for one PLC scan you can't actually see this contact turning on it's actually too quick for the laptop to pick up and display it's only one millisecond but it is on for one PLC scan and we can see this because the value that's inside of MW202 is one. So what's happening here is when M10.1, our timer two on signal turns on, it increments the value with MW200 by one, and that's as long as it's on for, and when it turns off, which is after one PLC scan, it transfers the value which is in MW200, which is zero, into MW202, which is now one, and then zero is MW200. And just to prove that that there is changing, I'll just modify the operand. I'll just change that to zero. And when I change it to zero, you should see it go back to one, which it does. And if I try to change it back to zero again, zero and then it's back to one again so that there is proven that that there is only on for one plc scan whilst that there is on for one second if i change this timer here to t hash three seconds and i change this timer here to t hash three seconds i'll save that download that to the plc Timer 1 will now be on for 3,000 scans, or approximately 3,000 scans. There you go, 2,963, 2,971, and Timer 2 is still on for one PLC scan. So that there proves that Timer 2 is only on for one PLC scan. So to those who got that right, congratulations. To those who got that wrong, I hope you now understand why that's on for one PLC scan, and now you can actually see that it is only on for one PLC scan. I hope you guys have enjoyed this short little video for today. I'll see you again next week. Enjoy yourselves.